greetings, divine peace, mercy, and blessings upon all of you. Hmm. I'm feeling great today. Had such a beautiful night. We're approaching the ending of Ramadan, and I can scarcely believe how quickly the time has gone, and all of the things that I was being tested with in the beginning, it's all come to this beautiful fruition. this realization and recognition that the timing was divine. Certain difficulties, certain tests, certain areas of discomfort must happen in the time that they do exactly to result in the growth and the expansion in that which is needed, be it a catalyst, be it a creation. And so I'm in this place still connected to that which is unknown, and yet the unknown that was before is not like the unknown now because of that divine trust. When we trust a person, it's because we have interactions with them or the interactions of others and the resulting feeling is somehow imparted to us. So someone that we trust, trusts another, and therefore in some way they also have our trust. Or we interact over and over and over again such that we know. We know that we can rely on this one. We know that this one wants good for us. But those who never give an opportunity For the circumstances in which they can test this out will never realize if they truly can trust or not. What I've noticed in my experience is that we must allow, we must allow ourselves to be held we must allow ourselves to be supported, to know that we simply can. It may take just one time of being told, I'm going to hold you, and then that not happening, for us to then say, okay, I wasn't held, I fell on my face on the floor, and so, I'm not trusting this one anymore. In the case of the Most High, in the case of the Creator, in the case of the One who made all of this, who brought all of this into existence, part of establishing trust is the asking, is the asking for guidance. Part of it is in the connection to the Divine Revelations where we're told, if you call on me, I will answer you. Allah says in the Quran, Udu'uni astajib lakum, call on me and I will answer you. Greetings, Lilia. I was just thinking about you and, and breaking fast together again. And me and this beautiful sister, we were together a group of us were all together last night and I alluded to that in the beginning of this live going to 
being in the last 10 nights and in connection with this subject of divine trust I trust that my purpose for being on this earth is connected to the greater purpose of surrendering giving myself to God worshiping to the best of my ability because Allah doesn't expect us to be perfect and why do I trust that why not just because I opened the Quran and it said it not just because my parents told me that not just because I lived in community where they said that but I can feel the tangible difference of when I'm immersed in heedlessness and when I'm in the opposite of devotion when I'm in the opposite of divine alignment and how does my heart feel how do I wake up in the morning is the heart at peace is there contentment is there sweetness is there balance is there trust in what is to come or is it anxiety and anxiousness and anger and frustration and I notice a difference what you feel from me or what perhaps any of you who watch this will feel is a result of stepping into that remembrance again and that surrender again to the best of my ability and tasting the sweetness of that it's like people who meditate on a regular basis are meditating for a reason there is a peace that they get there's a equilibrium that they get there's a balance there's a being at home within yourself When we don't do what we were put on this earth for, we are going to feel miserable and we're going to feel sad and we're going to feel alone. But the more we acknowledge our origin, which is the one, which is Allah, again, the one who made all of this, who created everything that came into existence, the one that Jesus called Ilah or Allah, the one that Moses called Elohim, the one that all of the true prophets called the people to when we when we surrender to Allah and when we come with an open heart there's nothing that compares to that and this is why Ramadan is so important because Allah is giving us a boost he's like look we're chaining these devils up okay <laughs> They're not going to have as much influence. It is a time for you to get yourself together. It is a time for you to live what you know. It is a time for you to reinforce your state of surrender. It's a time to taste the sweetness of divine speech that some of you, many of you who know me, a lot of people on my Instagram I, I've met in, in person and I like to keep it within that unless there's an alignment otherwise but some of you have heard me recite Quran some of you have come to me for sessions where I recite a Quran and you felt it you felt it it's your soul that is recognizing and getting out of this the intellect matters the intellect does matter we're given brains for a reason we're given minds for a reason and we use them and everyone's mind is different it's so amazing everyone thinks different you have three people seeing the same thing hearing the same thing and they each will come away with a different analysis or lack thereof But that feeling, you know, stepping into the heart. And someone could say, well, how do I step into the heart? How do I step into the heart? Someone may ask. Set intention. 
That's it. It's so simple. Anything that we desire, we set intention for, and we ask for divine assistance. We set intention and we ask for divine assistance. You're not sure about something. You're confused about a matter. You ask for guidance. Not everyone here says Allah. Not everyone here uses that term. But you who made all this, you who created me, you who brought time and space into existence, guide me. Guide me. Every one of you is struggling with something. Every one of you is confused about something. Every one of you is like, I'm not sure about this. I want, want, show me luck. I want that and I don't have it. Oh Allah, oh you who made all of this, show me the way to happiness, the way to peace, the way to the love that I desire, the way to the partnership I desire, the way to health, the way to healing. Show me. And if we desire certain things to be in our life, then we set an intention for it. I intend to have meaningful connection in my life, and I do. Alhamdulillah. I intend to be loved as I am and as I progress and go through the stages of my own personal evolution and I am I intend and expect to be supported by those that love me because what I am doing and what I desire to do is not for me it's beyond myself and it's happening I know that when a mission is announced and when a purpose is announced or when a project is announced and that clarity is there and the heart is present and the mind is clear and it's beyond me, it's not about me, all the resources are coming. I divinely trust in that. When there is divine trust, the heart is soothed. When there is divine trust, contentment descends upon the heart, the tranquility comes. When there is divine trust, you see the wisdom in the trial. When there is divine trust, you know that there's a medicine in the madness, in what appears to be madness. Like there's a medicine in that moment that seems the most intense. And sometimes it takes a little bit to, to actually witness it and feel it, but it's there. We are not meant to do this alone. There's a reason why you're here at this moment. There's a reason why you're listening right now my brother, my sister. Some of you don't comment, it's okay. I like to know when you listen because it's encouraging for me because at the end of the day, I'm a human being. So energy gives more, you know? When we give energy to someone and we encourage them, we say to them, what you said touched me or can you do more of that? Or it helps, it helps. But I understand that we all are working through so much and we don't know what's to come. And I don't say that ominously, I just say we don't know what's to come. So we may have a moment of peace and reprieve and may, something may happen again and we need each other. We need the most high. We need prayer. We need meditation. We need to get away from our phones. We need to be in nature. We need to ground. We need to get away from excessive processed foods and things that actually feed the parasites that are in us and and cloud our judgment and cloud our mindset we need to move our bodies we need to breathe the free medicine 
that is available when we simply tap into the moment and are fully present with our breath. All of the, the most elevated healing, curative and preventative, is free. The sunshine is free, and that is a medicine. The air that we breathe, if we consciously breathe, you can release trauma just from communicating with your body and intending and breathing the right way, you can release trauma. So breathing is free. Walking on the earth barefoot removes radiation, removes and actually decreases inflammation. This is, the studies have shown this, this is a fact. And inflammation is the root of disease. Walking barefoot on the earth, finding a patch of earth to sit on, lay on, is free. Touch. Touch. Whether it's with a pet, whether it's with a person, getting that touch is a medicine. And it's free. Moving your body. Moving your body. Walking. Not all of us are going to be marathon runners. Not all of us are going to sprint. Not all of, I mean, it's beautiful, but not all of us are going to do that. Not everyone is going to do that. But just walking. Walking. It works the entire body, the skeletal system, the muscles, the car, everything, the nerves. And it's free. The trees don't ask anything of us. We exhale and they give us oxygen back. I say that looking at trees right now. It's beautiful trees right here. And speaking of trust, something's going on with my camera. So I trust that I will figure out what is going on <laughs> so we can come back to a clear picture. So right now I'm just flowing, but one thing I want to share for anyone who is going to listen or is presently listening, there's a prayer that I feel to share because one of my purposes that I've come into and it's been with me since I was very young and it continues to be with me is to bridge between ideas, medicines, communities, and specifically to bring the beautiful spirituality and wisdoms, universal wisdoms that are within Islamic teachings from the Quran, from the prophets, that affirms and confirms what came before and what we're learning in these times. And I will bring something now from the past, and it's a statement, it's a prayer that we make whenever we are embarking on doing something. So suppose you, you oh, should, I t should I take this new job? Should I leave my job and create my own business? Oh, should I move to this country? Should I stay with this person? Should I start, should I marry this person? Per, this person? Um, I was about to say person, which I've never said before. <laughs> should I marry this person? Should I go on this diet or this way of eating? for my health or to release excess weight? Should I exercise in this way? Whatever it is, should I stay in this home? Should I move to another? Whatever you're embarking on or thinking or considering, this prayer, I'll say some of it in Arabic and then translate it. This prayer is a means, I'm telling you, it will bring so much peace. Because sometimes we'll make these decisions and we're thinking, oh, I have to make the decision. I have to make the decision. I have to, you know, decide everything. It's a lot. It's a lot of decisions to make all the time. And when you're doing it alone and you're not relying on the divine, it will stress you out. I'm just telling you right now from personal experience. But when you understand that there's a divine plan and you say this prayer, you trust. And you know that what is about to happen or what is going to happen is the answer. So, this is the prayer. We're talking about a prayer that we make, a supplication that we make, when we're about to make a decision. This one says, 
And before I start, it's called istikhara. Ist means seeking. Khara, coming from the word khair, means goodness. So it's a prayer of seeking goodness. Allahumma, O oh Allah, O oh God, O oh Creator, Source that made all of this. Astaghfiruka bi ilmak. I am seeking the good that you have the knowledge of. Wastaqdiruka bi qudratik, and and I am seeking the divine decree that is within what you decree. Wa asaluka min fadlik al azim. And I'm asking you from your great bounty. In kunta ta'alam anna hadha al-amr. If you know that this matter, and then you state the matter. Okay? I made this last night about staying in the home that I'm in. In kunta ta'alam anna hadha al-amr. If you know that this matter is if you know that this matter is good for me in my deen, meaning my divine connection, my faith, my my spiritual life, dunyaya, my worldly life, sorry, the way that I make my living, amri, and the final end result. So basically, to bring it all together. You're asking for guidance and you're saying, if this matter that I'm embarking on is good for my spiritual life, my worldly life, the way that I make my living, and basically like the entirety of my existence, if it's good for me, وَقَدِرْهُ لِي وَيَسِّرْهُ لِي Decree it for me. Make it easy for me. ثُمَّ بَارِكْ لِي فِي And then put blessings in it. Put baraka in it. Baraka is a word that means to protect it, to preserve it, to bless it, to increase it. All of that is in that one word. So you're trusting, you're saying, if this is good for me, if it's good for me to stay in this house, if it's good for me to stay living in Bali, if it's good for me to consider so-and-so for marriage, if it's good for me to go on 60 days raw or on juice, whatever it may be. Make it easy for me, decree it for me, and bless it. And then it goes on to say, وَإِن كُنْتَ تَعْلَمْ أَنَّ هَذَا الْأَمَرْ شَرٌ لِي فِي دِينِ وَمَعَاشِي But if you know, you're talking to God, the Most High, if you know that this matter is not good for all those things, it's actually evil, it's bad for me, in these particular areas, وَصْرِفْهُ عَنِّي وَصْرِفْنِي عَنْ Then move it away from me, move me away from it. And then make me pleased with the matter. Make me content. People have everything. There's people who we look at and we think they have it all. They have everything. But they don't have contentment. There's always more and more and more and more and not just resting in in the present gifts that we all have we all have something to be grateful for right now just imagine one minute you couldn't hear or imagine one minute you couldn't see or imagine one minute you couldn't walk just seriously you couldn't walk or you couldn't see anything how different would your life be we all have something to be grateful for and gratitude increases that which we are grateful for so if i'm grateful for the abundance in my life if i'm grateful for the lessons if i'm grateful for the people who love me if i'm grateful Allah 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 if i'm grateful for even something a person could say oh i don't have enough to do this 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 but whatever you do have you're grateful for it and you really feel it you have more universal law so I wanted to leave you with this prayer of course you know you can come back again you can listen to it you could take notes if I have if you have any questions then I am here if any of you if anyone ever hearing this watches this desires 
some form of consultation, I am here. If you simply just have a question without consultation, I am here. There's nothing like divine trust. There's nothing like knowing that you are held, that you are heard, that even if no one truly understands your inner world, and I think the nature of the human experience is that we are alone, meaning we came into this earth in some sense alone, even if we were held, we, we came out alone. When we go into the earth again, we're going to be alone. When we go back to God, it's just us. It's you and your deeds, you and your intentions. And so no one can ever fully, fully, completely in the microscopic detail know everything you feel, exactly why you feel it. They can't. But Allah knows, my brothers and sisters, Allah knows, Allah knows, Allah knows, Allah knows. <sighs> you are divinely held. Allah is here for you. Not just in the ambiguous general, but in the specific. In the specific. In the specific matters, you are seen and you are heard and you are held. And we don't know how long we have in this life and we don't know what is going to be shifting in even the months to come. But remember that. Remember that you're held. Remember. any of this has touched you in any way, shape, or form, please leave a comment and let me know in what way, what did you resonate with, what did you feel. If you have any questions, please feel free to drop the question in the comments. And even if I've never met you and you've never experienced my hug before, I'm hugging you. I'm sending you love. Thank you.